My name is David Lepofsky. Today is uh, Saturday, November the 19th, 2016, and I'm standing in the basement of the brand new uh, Culinary Arts Center built uh, with our tax dollars at Centennial College in the northeast corner of Toronto. I've come to look around to see how well they did on accessibility. Now, the Government of Ontario committed by legislation that we are to become fully accessible by the year 2025 and promised they would never use public money to create or perpetuate barriers against people with disabilities. The government also promised that it would lead by example, i.e. be ahead of the game in doing accessibility. What we found in this building is a number of accessibility blunders that should have been easily foreseen, easily avoided, at little or no cost, but instead they've created a mess uh, which will cost more to fix if they set about to fix it. Now that's not to say they got everything wrong. There's a number of good accessibility features in the building and it's a very nice building. But let me take a few minutes to just show you some examples uh, of where they got things wrong. We're tweeting accessibility barriers like these with the hashtag uh, number sign and an AODA fail. AODA stands for the Accessibility for Ontarians with Disabilities Act. Uh, and we will be tweeting pictures of some of the barriers I'm going to show you as AODA fails. Any organization that's now designing a new building or a renovation of one sure doesn't want to be caught on an AODA fail photograph, tweet, or video. So we encourage them to do far more than our inadequate building code requires, and indeed far more than the insufficient or incomplete accessibility standards now provide for under the Accessibility for Ontarians with Disabilities Act. Don't get yourself caught in the kind of mess that we're about to show you here at the brand new uh, Culinary Arts Centre at, uh, at uh, Centennial, uh, Centennial College in Toronto. When we were recording these videos, we were just using the microphone on the smartphone and there are places where the sound wasn't good enough, so I'm going to re-record what I had to say. So in the video, you'll see me talking, but my voice will be saying more or less the same thing. Parking. Here in front of the building, there are some accessible parking spots, and that's great, but there isn't the required vertical signage. There's a pole, but no sign on it announcing that it's an accessible parking spot. There's also a curb cut that's aligned with the access aisle, and that's good, but the curb cut is missing the required flat area at the top, which lets somebody walking by pass without tipping over. Parking pay machine. Near the accessible parking spots, there is a parking meter for you to pay for your parking. However, it's at standing height, so that's not accessible to somebody in a wheelchair who uses the accessible parking spots. That makes no sense. Crosswalk. Here near the front entrance to the building, there is a crosswalk. There is a curb cut, that's good, but there is no cane detectable warning so that a person using a white cane would know that they're about to walk from the sidewalk into the road and into traffic. Those warnings are also helpful for people who are sighted but not paying attention. That's a safety problem. Exterior stairs. Right in front of the main entrance, there's a ramp and stairs. It's good that there's a ramp, but there's some significant accessibility blunders with the stairs. There's no detectable warning surface at the top landing to know by touch that you're at the top of a flight of stairs. There's a handrail only on one side rather than both, which is what you need for accessibility. The handrail is not extended out at the bottom, which is also needed, and the step edges are neither slip resistant or color contrasted. Exterior ramp. There is a ramp beside the stairs going to the front door, and that's good. But there's only a railing on one side, not both sides. There should be, for accessibility, a railing on both sides. Some people uh, need one on both sides or may need one on the side which is missing for balance. Moreover, the side where there is no rail is the side where there's a vertical drop-off that presents a safety problem, not only for people with disabilities, but frankly for everybody, especially little kids. But there is a cane detectable edge on the side that's missing a railing. That's helpful for someone using a white cane, but it's far more important to have a railing there uh, for safety as well as for guidance. 
west entrance. Outside the main entrance to the building, as you approach, there is an automatic door opening system, but it doesn't work automatically. You have to press a button that is on a post to the left of the doors. I wouldn't even know it's there, and I wouldn't know it's on a post. And if I were to reach to the post, I'd find that there are two squares. Above is the push button uh, to operate the door, and below is some sort of card security thing. Of course, there's no braille or other labeling to explain it. West Vestibule just inside those doors, where it isn't windy, but it is echoey, um, I want to emphasize that in the vast majority of buildings that we walk up to, if they have automatic doors, they don't want to sense you. You don't have to grope around and find something to push. By the way, this building doesn't use any ones that are motion sensor driven. You've got to actually put your hand on it and push. That's a limitation not only for someone with vision loss, but somebody who's got uh, motor limitations who can't do it. Once you come inside this building, Right in the open area, you'll see there's a, a second inner door. And to operate these buttons, they're not on a post here. They're, they're up on the wall, and there's two of them, uh, one here and one over here. There's no braille signage to let a blind person uh, know what they are. And we'll see in other doors in this building, instead of these being mounted on the wall, they're on a post, and, uh, which provides no consistency, no predictability. I have to memorize all of these things, which if I'm a newcomer to the building, I wouldn't even know they're there, much less what I know where to systematically look to find out if they're there. It's, it's yet another example of a really thoughtless design from the point of view of accessibility. In a building where they wanted to put in automatic doors to make it easier for people with disabilities, so they, they were thinking about accessibility, they just were not thinking uh, properly. And, this is yet another example where our building code lets everyone down by not setting standards uh, that would regularize all this and make it something that everyone would do the right way. West Interior. On the same entrance door, once you get inside, there is a push button to open uh, the automatic doors. Uh, again, it's not automatic that the automatic doors open. I wouldn't know to start feeling the walls, but on top of that, uh, there are, at some of these uh, entrances, the button is on the wall. On others, it's on a post. There's no consistency or predictability. Signage. Just a few meters into the main foyer in a corner, there's this big sign up here. Um, and it's got large print, but it doesn't have any braille. And we're just meters away from other signage, which commendably does have braille. Uh, why they can't do consistent signage for people who would read, uh, need braille signage is hard to understand. Washrooms. I'm, I'm now on the basement floor of the Culinary Arts Building, the brand new building at, uh, at Centennial College uh, in Scarborough. And uh, here they have a public women's washroom and right next to the men's washroom, the only thing between them is a, uh, uh, a little thin uh, uh, wall or something. So here's the thing. The, beside the women's washroom, it's great that they've got signage with, with raised letters and it says women in Braille. But um, a blind person isn't going to be feeling the entire wall to find out uh, whether there's a sign here. And when we walk by, what we would hear is just the echo uh, and it doesn't sound like there's two separate bathrooms. It sounds like there would be just one. So I wouldn't know to go over and check further that beyond here is the men's room, uh, if I was here for the first time, and then look for a sign here. Uh, it would be way better if they simply had a door with a sign. Um, but this, I, I, I've never seen before where there's two bathroom entrances with an echoey area and this tiny little uh, uh, barrier between the two, I would just think it's one washroom and would walk on by. If I saw that, if I did happen to find the women's room sign, I would walk on by uh, and assume, well, the men's room must be somewhere else. Baby change table. So inside this men's washroom, it's good that they've got a change table here, but they put the change table in a position right by the accessible bathroom stall. So if somebody's in the accessible washroom stall, they go open the door, they're gonna whack anybody who's out here changing a child. So it's a really stupid location.
as well, the change table is completely missing uh, proper color contrast for somebody with, with low vision. Elevator signage. So, so I'm in the basement of the Culinary Arts Building, which is actually on the ground, but it's not called the ground floor or the main floor, it's called the basement. That's confusing enough. And near uh, important elevators to go up the building, uh, rather than having proper uh, accessible signage, they put a sign up, which for one thing doesn't have anything accessible for people who don't read print, but it's also sticking out into the path of travel here, so there's a, a chance you could walk into it and, and knock it over. And there's also, the thing could go under it, not detected until you walk into it. So it's, it's uh, inaccessibility built upon inaccessibility. Elevator. This says main, but the voice on the elevator is going to say ground, which is referring to a floor that's not the ground floor, it's one above the ground floor. I'm just pushing the main button. In Braille, it says main. We're not going there. Okay. Now we're going there, we're going down. Braille here says main and listen to the elevator. Ground voice. floor. Which would be completely confusing to me. Well, am I on the ground floor or am I on the main floor? Elevator, lobby, signage. Up here on the eighth floor, they also, right by the elevator, have a nice sign telling you all of what's available on this floor, uh, but it's in print and there is no braille signage, so blind students aren't supposed to know what's on this floor. Full height glass. Up on the eighth floor uh, is just another example of the floor to ceiling glass without the proper demarcation of some kind of color or, or visible thing here to enable someone with low vision to know that this is, uh, isn't just uh, open space um, and that there's, uh, there's actually uh, a solid surface here in the form of glass. Barrier free washroom. So I'm now on the, uh, what the elevator would call the main floor if you're reading Braille or the ground floor if you're listening to the voice or if you're thinking in real space you're actually not on the ground floor or the main floor you're actually on the first floor but about, aside from that confusion right outside the elevators i just came up uh, is an inclusive washroom and there's a braille sign here that says inclusive washroom which is great and there's the international accessibility symbol um, but the automatic door opener is not where you would figure it would be right here you'd have to know to start feeling all over until you get over here uh, to find it. Um, and then we have, the big problem though is when I open the door, there's no transfer space in the bathroom. It's a bathroom meant for people with disabilities to be accommodated, but there's no, not the needed transfer space uh, to meet their needs. South entrance interior. So just inside one of the entrances at the Centennial College uh, Culinary Arts Center, they have to power the automatic doors. You don't just go through the doors and have a sensor, pick up your presents like in zillions of other buildings. You have to find those posts that are sticking out in the middle of the uh, floor and, and press the button. Of course, somebody who's visually impaired would have no idea it's there or where to find it, and there's no you know, marked path to travel like a, uh, a, a carpet that you lead you to. So you have to be swinging your hand around hoping you find it. Then you have to find it and figure out which side has the button, and then you would open the door. I suspect a lot of vision impaired people would never even be able to find it, much less know it's there. South Vestibule. Okay. Now, once you are open that one door, and you're now between the inside door and the outside door, again, here we've got another one of these valves, one of these things sticking up from the floor that I've uh, not encountered in virtually any other building except the disastrous design of the Women's College Hospital. Um, wouldn't even know to look for it, but if I look for it, I'd be confused by the fact that for some other doors, uh, these automatic door openers are on the wall, not on something sticking up in the middle, but let's get past that problem. If I didn't come over here and feel there's a button, I don't necessarily know there are two buttons, 
So I'm looking to go out the door and I only find this one to push it. And I push this one to figure out which it is. And while I'm standing here, this door comes over and hits me um, and pushes me out of the way. Because while I'm standing here trying to operate, I'm right in the line of this door. This is a really stupid design. East entrance. I'm now standing outside one of the secondary doors uh, to the building, and you'll see they've got an automatic door opener, but it's not on one of those little pillar things, it's on the wall. So, for one thing, I'd never know to look as a blind person. For another thing, I wouldn't be groping all the way over here to find it. And for a third thing, I'd be finding this and not knowing if what's what, because they're close to each other and one, they don't feel hugely different. And, there's no braille labeling to explain what's what. But on top of that, if I'd come in the front door and I had learned that they had one of those poles with the buttons on it, I'd walk up to this door and I'd, I'd look for another pole with an automatic door opener, like something consistent and predictable. Clearly something the designers of this building never had in mind. So yet another uh, poor piece of accessibility design. What they should have had is a simple automatic door opener like there are in so many office buildings, hotels, uh, hospitals, uh, and other major public buildings. East Crosswalk number one. So I'm now just feet away from that um, entrance to the building, and they have a crosswalk right here with no curb cuts and no tactile uh, prompting that there's a crosswalk here. Now there is a crosswalk with curb cuts just a few meters away, but when I uh, show you how it's designed, you'd realize it's not much of a solution. East Crosswalk number two. So here, just a few feet away, is this other crosswalk where they did put in a curb cut. Uh, but it points me, as a blind person, to walking into oncoming traffic, rather than if they had made the other inaccessible uh, crosswalk accessible, it would point me to go right across the way you ordinarily would cross a street. So this is just, from the point of view of safety and accessibility, um, another blunder. Conclusion. So this is David Lepofsky, Chair of the Accessibility for Ontarians with Disabilities Act Alliance. Thanks for watching this video. To learn more about us, visit our website at www.aodaalliance.org. To follow our tweets, follow us at, at AODA Alliance on Twitter. And if you want to sign up to get our email updates, just send an email to aodafeedback at gmail.com. And all you have to say is, sign me up. That email address again is aodafeedback at gmail.com. Thanks so much for watching. We welcome your feedback. Let us know about AODA fails or AODA wins that you know about around Ontario.